From the All-Ireland Business Foundation, this is Elaine Carl bringing you AIBF Business Talk. AIBF is an independent national body tasked with enterprise development and the promotion of best-in-class businesses as business all-stars. Today, I catch up with David Noon of Access Hospitality, a software solutions company based in Galway, working with operators in the hospitality and care sectors, helping them to reduce costs, improve staff engagement and deliver better guest experiences. David, thank you so much for joining me today on AIBF Business Talk. I'd love to learn more about the work that you do with hospitality because judging by the name itself, I'm guessing it's something within the hospitality industry. Yeah, absolutely, Elaine, and uh, I'm delighted to join you today. Um, yeah, Access Hospitality, uh, we're all about providing best and breed technology for the hospitality industry. Um, we uh, I basically look at providing um, software that helps our clients, I suppose, in, improve efficiencies within their business, uh, reduce costs, um, giving them freedom to do more, um, to, to deliver better guest experiences. Dave, I'm very curious to know, did you actually have a background in hospitality, seeing as you ended up in a business in the hospitality sector? Um, no, Elaine, and, and uh, quite a few of my clients would probably be uh, uh, surprised to hear that. Um, I mean, when I was young, obviously, I did work in hotels and, and the bar and restaurant trade. Uh, but no, my background is is engineering. Um, I worked, I uh, studied maths and physics in college, went on to work for a number of computer companies as an engineer um, and really enjoyed that time. Um, but when I was, I was made redundant in around 2008 from uh, a company called APC. Uh, and I went working with a friend of mine, uh, Tommy Griffith. He had a small business at the time called uh, PEL. Uh, recycling equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, I spent three and a half years with Tommy. I actually only went for three three months, uh, <laughs> but I spent three years. But I learned an awful lot about small businesses. Um, but around that time, around 2010, um, I met a gentleman called George Harrington, uh, and George worked in the in the hospitality arena. Um, right. He provided proc procurement consultancy for for hotels and bars and restaurants. And George and myself uh, set up a business um, and we, it was twofold, a two prong approach. It was pr a service business. Uh, we provided pr procurement consultancy and, and we provided waste management consultancy for, for the hospitality industry. And nice. uh, it really went from there. Um, and around 2015, I, we noticed a gap in the market for, I suppose, uh, hospitality software. Um, and we came across a, a company called Procure Wizard, a Scottish company. Um, mm -hmm. I um, did a deal very quickly with uh, with a guy called William Gorrell. Um, uh, he was a, host a hotel operator by trade, um, and he developed a really good procurement solution called Procure Wizard. Um, got the license for Ireland, and um, basically realised that this was an opportunity to you know mm -hmm. to, to really build something um, worthwhile. And uh, it kind of went from there. Um, and over the last five, six years, George, I suppose, he took the procurement, the consultancy business, and I went with, down the route of the software. Bringing you um, back to your roots and your original education type, you, you know, yeah, and originally it, it, kind of it, where you started off. It came full circle. It, exactly, exactly. And um, I, I think, we, you know, my strengths, one of my strengths would be building relationships with customers. Um, and I think... Uh, that's hugely important. And I had over the previous five years built up some great relationships with, with some of the leading hotel groups in the country and some of the leading uh, restaurant operators. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that really gave me the basis to, in which to, to grow up Cure Wizard. Um, it took some time to get it out to the market, um, but we learned a lot of lessons. But we grew, you know, we grew from, uh, you know, from an early stage of having about 10, 15 clients to now having over 1,600 uh, customers across the country. Wow, God, that, that's a huge growth. And what type of clients in the hospitality sector? Because it's a, you know, it's a big, it's a big sector because you've got from the right, from the hotels down to the small cafes. Who exactly do you serve or where is your sweet spot, David? Uh, look, um, you know, procurement, um, affects an awful lot of people and uh you know our system can be used wherever there's catering so we we work with 
you know, single site operators to multi site operators like Delata. Um, we work with restaurants, the Mercantile Group. Um, we work with facility management companies, uh, Mount Charles, um, Nalens in, in Loch Ray. Um, we work with nursing homes. So anywhere where there's catering, um, they use they use our product. Um, okay, but and how can that it benefit it, them? Oh, uh, um, basically, Procure Wizard gives them control over their procurement process. Um, it you know it helps them to uh, reduce costs it gives them visibility to what they're buying and um, it cuts out the non-value added uh, purchasing that a lot of businesses would have um mm-hmm. but i think you know knowledge is power and data having you know helps make decisions da- yeah decisions, real-time yeah. data and i think mm-hmm. that's that's very critical for a lot of businesses um, and that's what we provide them with um but look you know procure wizard then got bought out um into uh, four years ago by the access group and the access group are, are, are you know dealing with a small company like procure wizard at the time was fantastic um mm-hmm. and you could affect a, a lot of change from a development point of view um and, but now with the access group it has opened a lot of doors for us uh, with big range of products that we can offer um, our clients um, and that's you know that the business has moved on now um, we currently employ about 25 people um, we have about eight or nine different products we can offer the hospitality industry right right from um, financials to HR to re- restaurant reservations uh, online ordering p- uh, point of sale uh, and procurement uh, so we we have we have a, an extensive range of products, and they all are all about driving efficiencies and 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 improving cost base. Very good. And tell me, David, look, because we know that the hospitality sector was one of the hardest hit sectors over the last two years. How did that affect? Did that have a knock on effect in your business, or did it give you some breathing space? Oh, absolutely. There's no one in hospitality that wasn't affected, uh, and in particular, you know, the the service providers to the hospitality arena. Um, for us, yes, we got hard hit, but it gives us an opportunity to, to relook at the business. How could we add more value to our clients? How could we, you know, improve the service that we could provide to them? Um, and to be honest with you, in one way, it was a blessing in disguise. We got to clean up a lot of things, uh, got to improve our processes. And uh, we now, I mean, I think we're probably in a better position now than we were uh, two years ago. Um, and certainly from uh, an opportunity to scale up. Um, because we have a lot of opportunity, you know, while we provide, you know, we probably prov- provide uh, the hospitality industry, about 35% of the hospitality industry with our products, um, there's a lot more to be done. Um, there's a lot more. I like that. I like that best sense of ambition. So, David, would it be fair to say that perhaps redundancy was a catalyst for change in your life? Because it seems to be from that point that you went down the entrepreneurial route and left the, you know, the, the should we say, life as an employee. Yeah, absolutely, um, Elaine. I, I suppose I always wanted to be my own boss and um, I suppose controlling my own destiny. Um, you know, and while I enjoyed working for other companies and, and learned a lot, um, I felt that, you know, one of my goals in life, obviously, for, you know, is to gain financial freedom from my, from my family. Um, I just felt that there was opportunities out there that would help me achieve that. And, uh, that was that was probably the big catalyst, you know. And and tell me, did you have any good mentors, or did you take inspiration from anybody in particular along the way, David? Yeah, I, I tell you, I'm I like to read. Um, I can't. I'm probably not the best person for short term memory, remembering quotes and things like that. Mm-hmm. But I I like to read a lot of autobiographies. Um, I remember one of the, one of the first ones I read was Richard Branson. Um, mm-hmm. and you know just his flamboyancy, uh, his innovation, uh, his drive, you know, that really, you know, it, it, it mm-hmm. resonated with me. Um, and I think one of the big things is, you know, a, a, in any business is, is the, your willingness to learn because every day absolutely. is a learning day, you know, oh, 100%. and anybody um, could be your teacher. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, when you start out a business networking, and it's one of the things mm-hmm. I learned from, from Tommy and PEL, uh, is, you know, you have to put yourself out there. Um, and you have to be willing to network and mm-hmm. you know being part of the the, the all ireland business foundation has been fantastic um, i'm also part of a, a group called smocked with park amalia we are, excellent you know, we do a lot of work yeah 
Yeah, and you, that was the first time I came across yourself, yourself and Kapil. Um, Very good. And I'm part of a partner of business group. We we meet well, we meet online every couple mm-hmm. of weeks, uh, like minded business people, and you know, sharing our ex- challenges or experiences, um, you know, it really helps. Um, and I think that's important when you're uh, when you're starting out, when you're small, and even now, you know, I mean, look at I'm a small business operator. I've 25 people but um you know you're learning all the time yeah and i think you know from having a similar conversation with lots of other you know um business owners is that we're expected sometimes to have all of the answers which we don't necessarily all you know have and being part of a peer group or network like that is a great support as well you know far as our journey david look you know no business is without its challenges what would you say would be maybe some of the biggest challenges that you've come across since setting up the business outside of COVID, of course? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, Lena. I think, you know, before COVID in particular and in the early stages, probably for me, you know, it was funding. Um, I think that was probably my biggest challenge. Um, uh, second is it was attracting the right people, um, you know, but funding definitely was a challenge, but I built up a very good relationship with my bank and, mm-hmm. and over time then that developed. And I think that's important when you're, uh, you know, trying to grow your business, uh, you know, growing, building that relationship with my bank and, and looking at avenues, how they could support me going forward as I wanted to scale the business. I think the other thing then is obviously attracting the right people. Um, mm-hmm. And sometimes, look, I mean, I think that's very key because we don't all have the, all the answers and I certainly have plenty of weaknesses, but um, I've been able to build a fantastic team. Um, I'm very grateful to have that team. Um, you know, when COVID hit, we obviously, you know, lost a few people, um, but we've built that back up again. But I have my core team for the last six, seven years, and that has been, you know, it's it's been huge to me and they've been, you know, very loyal to me. Um, but I think you have to look after them and mm-hmm. you know everybody talks about putting the customer first um, but I, I have to say that my team you know uh, and the people around me they're probably the most important customers mm-hmm. are a close second um, but investing in your team is hugely important so definitely when you look after your team they in turn will automatically look after customers so I think it's a, it's Abs- a, it's full, it's full it's cycle a isn't it yeah, yeah it's a circle yeah. David yeah. what advice from your experience would you give yeah. to another person, you know, thinking of setting up a business or somebody else running their own business? What's been your biggest learning? Yeah, uh, look, I, I suppose there's a few things. Look, I, I think, um, you, you know, you have to be willing to to listen. Um, I would say for certainly, you know, as you build your team, you know, listen, listening is hugely important. Um, listening to your customers, engaging with your customers. Uh, that's for us has been probably, you know, the the number one. Um, It helps drive product improvement or service improvement. Um, It it drives everything for us, you know. Um, Mm. A huge amount of our business is referrals, um, and that comes from our customers. And I think if you can, you know, listen and learn, um, that's that's hugely, that, that, that helps drive that, that innovation no, as well. No, 100%. You know? Yeah, no, 100%. And like that, it's amazing the clues that's left behind by customers, you know, yeah. um, and what we can learn and what we can take from it. David, yeah. look, you know, talking to you here today is, is absolutely inspirational. It's no wonder that you're two ta- you know, you've been a business all star two years in a row. You've been accredited as an All Ireland All Star Best in Class in Hospitality Software for the year. And also yourself personally have been acknowledged as an All Star Master Practitioner in Hospitality Software. What does that mean for you and the business? First of all, is you know, is recognition for for what what we're doing, um, you know, the journey that we're on, um, because it is a journey, and mm. you know, every, everybody is on the journey with me, um, and and with the business, um, but you know, for for our clients and our customers to see the recon- the accreditation, it just gives them confidence in what we're doing, uh, mm-hmm. and that we're doing what we're doing is right. Um, and you know, I think that's that's huge it, trust. You know, I think it, it's something you the, can't buy is trust, isn't it? Oh, so it's how ab- you establish ab- it. Absolutely, but I I will say the other side of this is that you know the collaboration and the networking that you know comes as part of the foundation and the accreditation is fantastic. I I just have really, in particular, you know, we've been involved now for the last two years. Um, and there's, there's so much. Anyone that's out there that's thinking about getting involved, I would I would highly recommend it. You know because that, that, there's that's so, good to hear. 
Yeah, you, I mean, you you offer a huge amount. Um, mm-hmm. I re- really enjoyed the last two years being involved with yourselves. Good stuff, and hopefully there's more years in our journey together. So now, yeah, David, absolutely. I'd like to I'd like to lift the bonnet of the car, and I'd like to ask you a few personal questions, and we can uh, so our audience can get to know the David, the man behind David Noon of Access Hospitality, a little bit a little bit more. <laughs> David, if you could send some advice back in time to your say twenty year old self, what wisdom would you share? Oh, um, what wisdom would I share? Uh, oh, uh, be willing to learn, you know. Um, I think that's hugely important. Uh, oh, live life, live mm-hmm. life every day because uh, life's too short. Um, that's, good, that's definitely a good motto to have in life is to live it. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I, absolutely. And, 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 you know, that's something that we all talk about. Um, yeah, I think willing to learn, you know, willing to, be willing yeah, to, no, and we, you know, be willing to expand your knowledge, you know. Um, I think that's l- learning is just it's 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 huge. It's so important, um, mm-hmm. and it, and it doesn't. And you you know you've seen there. It doesn't have to be from textbooks. It can be just be opening no. to other people's perspectives and advice or, or whatever uh, that is. And I think that's you know for me definitely over the last couple of years with with the the COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, being involved in in in, in your foundation and in other groups, uh, business networks, it's 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 opened my eyes and certainly helped me improve as a, as a leader in my in my business. Uh, so I appreciate that. You know, good stuff. The delight to have you as part of it, David. Tell us something that not everybody would know about you. Oh God, Elaine. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, when I was young, I look at I'm big into sport. Um, I'm I, I won't say I'm a sports fanatic, but I, I love watching sport and being involved and okay. helping out. Uh, when I was a young fella, I was very lucky to to get to play in Crow Park. Um, Brilliant, you know, yeah. And I'm looking forward to go back there. Um, hurling uh, or football? To, uh, football, football. Very I mean, good. I love hurling. <laughs> I, I absolutely am passionate about hurling, but uh, mm-hmm. played a lot of Gaelic when I was a young fella. A lot of sports, but to get to play in Crow Park was just uh, was an just honor and a real privilege. Honor. Yeah, absolutely. It was just it was special, special. Yeah, you know? brilliant. Delighted to hear it. So, Dave, tell us, what did you want to be when you were a child? Did you have any ambitions? Oh, Elaine, I don't know if I should share that one. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, try it. Oh, God. Oh, listen, uh, I'll tell you, um, my mother will have a good l- laugh at this one. But um, yeah, when I was a young fella, I wanted to be a jockey. Uh, very good excellent yeah and myself and my brother who's a year younger uh, we used to come down I, I, I my <laughs> my mother has a picture and i probably shouldn't share this but uh we uh, she's a picture of us sitting on the edge of either end of the couch the two of us <laughs> uh, but butt naked and riding out the finish of the grand national <laughs> Oh, Brilliant! <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, uh, but th- listen, that was short. That was short lived because uh, obviously then I I, I grew a, I grew a lot when I was about fifteen, sixteen. So that dream went to that dream very went good, away. <laughs> very good. Yeah. Well, that that's definitely a great ambition to have had. To have had. But I think you know, for our listeners here today, if you're interested in learning maybe on how you can streamline or learn about you know a software solution that can help your business, and if you are in the hospitality, I'd advise you to take a punt on David on David Noon for sure in our Access Hospitality. David, it's been an absolute pleasure and a privilege talking to you today. If any of our listeners would like to follow up with you and to learn more about your offering and potentially how it could help them in their businesses, how could they get in contact with you? Uh, absolutely, Elaine, and we'd be delighted to talk to anyone. Um, accesshospitality.ie um, or my email address is david at accesshospitality.ie Brilliant. Um, so we'd be delighted to talk to anyone and 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 even look at you know uh being in business is is sometimes can be a, a lonely journey um but there's a lot of people out there who's willing to help um and you know i'd offer be delighted to help anybody who's looking on, to go on their journey or start out their journey or whatever way i can help you know? that's very kind of you david so listen i think it's it's there's great evidence in it and seeing as to why you've been recognized as a business all-star yourself both personally and also the business david noon thank you so much for joining us today appreciate it thanks very much elaine thank you for listening to aibf business talk today i really do hope you enjoyed listening in to find out more about the all ireland business foundation and the work that we do especially the business all-stars program just go to www.aibf.ie Remember, never put off until tomorrow what you can do today. Until next time, from your host, Elaine Carroll, goodbye.